Going from being the game that historically took nothing but PRLs has announced another long-awaited feature that will change the game for players in Genshin Impact. World Level 9 is coming with the release of Natlin and I am so excited along with other quality of life features that we're going to go over right now. Welcome to Jello Impact where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Just in case you didn't know, my second channel Jello Zone Zero is popping off right now. The game is awesome. If you're playing it or you're interested, I'll link my second channel down below. We're giving away a Jane Doe for the second half of this patch. And while you're at it, please subscribe to this channel as well. Subscribers help me get sponsorships and it helps me feel good. You know, like my work testing a gacha game character really matters, you know? I'm kidding. I don't really care that much if you subscribe. Do what you want. Okay. The newest the developer discussion has arrived. These used to be so boring, bro. Now it's like guaranteed content because it's actually relevant. It's actually good. But in like the early days of my channel, they announced literally jack all in these and there was no content to be made. It was like, oh, another developer's discussion. Should I try and spin this into a video or not? And I just didn't because it wasn't even worth talking about. But nowadays, every single one is actual good updates. So let's get into it. New functions, including regional specialty tracking, long quest prompts, and more. Additionally, some optimizations and iterations have been made for the Serena teapot and food system. Let's check them out together. World level nine unlocked. Yes, what does it do though? That obviously matters. I know I'm getting excited about world level nine, but we all actually have to see what it does. So my biggest problem with world level eight before is it just feels imbalanced, right? The rewards aren't that high for, you know, for having played the game for so long. And of course the difficulty is super, super light. It's very, very easy. So it'd be nice to have another world level, which with, which has harder enemies and better drops. That's, that's what I want. Um, there's other things. What I would really love to see is special challenge bosses in world level nine. What I would really, really, really love to see. And I know this is a pipe dream, but I'd love to see something like in Zelda where you have the blood moon and then there's certain times of day or some, I don't know how they'd implement that exactly, but certain times where the, the, the sky in Zelda turns red and there's extra hard enemies and extra good drops. So it'd be the same in this where sometimes the enemies would get feral, maybe they'd get new move sets and they'd do extra stuff or combo up in ways that were harder. And then you could get, you know, maybe a five-star artifact drop from certain areas. And that would be like incredible. I know that there's no way that that's going to happen, but I know actually some people from Genshin watch my videos. So if you're watching, that's a really good idea and you should do it. You should do it. Genshin Impact. Uh, but what did they actually do? Because that's a pipe dream. What do they actually do? World level nine will be unlocked. The developers also bring new functions, including regional specialty cry along. Okay, we've already read that. Uh, travelers who have reached adventure rank 58, which is still very high. That's not very early. It takes a long time to get to 58, like a long time. This is not anything soon for people, uh, but they can choose if they want to upgrade to world level nine. When world level nine is increased, when, when you go to world level nine, the levels of normal opponents, elite opponents, and bosses, such as Electro Hepostasis, Regis Fine, etc., in the world will increase by about 10. Okay, the levels increase by about 10. 10 is actually pretty big, making the battles more challenging. 10 is a pretty big increase. They will be noticeably more challenging. Of course, the rewards for defeating opponents in the open world will be more generous. Good. That would be crazy if it was just the same rewards for a harder fight. Yeah, right. Uh, defeating a world level nine boss will guarantee at least three character level up materials. Amazing. And three is a massive increase because I don't know about you, but I feel like I always get two. Three is a 50% increase. Really, really big, really, really big going from two to three. So save your res if you're watching this. Try not to farm any bosses until Natlin. It's only a few weeks. Spend your resin on something else, anything but bosses. I was actually farming bosses today and I was like, uh, so I wasted I wasted some, some materials today, but that's okay. Uh, save your resin for bosses until Natlin. Uh, plus, starting for version 5.0, the basic drop rates for the following opponents will be optimized to increase the efficiency of obtaining corresponding materials. Spectre, Abyss Mage, Nabushi, Kiragi, Rune Guard, Rune Hunter, Rune Greater. The ruins haven't been as big of a deal for me, uh, except for the Rune Guard way back in the day, but the Kiragi and the Spectre, oh my goodness, insane, uh, insane bad luck or just like bad RNG or just bad systeming uh, for getting this stuff. So I'm very, very, very glad they're upping that. So that's world level nine. Great. Um, it's the minimum that I require for world level nine to be good, but they hit it and they didn't mess it up. So honestly, big win. It obviously doesn't go above and beyond with the stuff that I said, but I didn't expect that anyways, maybe one day, but it, Hey, at least we're hitting the minimum. This is where we should be. Uh, regional specialty tracking function and increased total map pins limit to help you find regional specialties more quickly after the version 5.0 update you'll be able to pinpoint the location range of regional specialties on the map 
this is like literally always so annoying to find out exactly where they are because you got to go to a the, the interactive map and I don't like going to the interactive map it breaks immersion for me so I like looking up where in general they are and using the characters to find the exact area but if I don't have the character or if one before I did have the character that showed me where it was it was super annoying so the fact that it actually shows where you can go and what else does it tell you with multiple blue circles at the same time the number of specialties that have not been collected will be displayed holy smokes my question is this is a pretty much obliterates that passive for all those characters like Tainari and Cloran and stuff like that it's pretty much a useless passive I hope that either that passive gets buffed or that they change it so it's not such a useless passive anymore or maybe I'm misunderstanding and it will still be somehow useful but in that case this wouldn't be that useful of a feature so um, not sure how that will be dealt with but hopefully they they adjust all those passives with a blanket new passive of some kind so they have something but let's see overall still a W though like it's not like that Oh, I want everyone else to have a worse experience so my character can do this thing. No, I want us all to have a better experience. It's just I hope that they update those passives so that they're not useless. After collecting all the specialties in the current area, the blue circles will automatically recommend new locations for the corresponding regional specialties. Perfect. Honestly, I didn't even think that they were ever going to do something like this, but the fact that they have just makes me so happy. This is going to make everything much better. This is one of the most annoying things in Genshin for me. So great job um, increasing pins by 50 I know I don't use really pins but I know people I use some obviously but I don't use too many I know people are gonna say this is not enough <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean hey at least they're increasing it I get new updates to the crafting benches mystic offering after version 5 point update eight new artifact sets that can be exchanged will be added to the mystic offering in the crafting bench holy smokes not just deepwood memories and the Sumeru ones, the Fontaine artifact sets from the first version, the Marishis 800 <clears throat> and the Golden Troop are being added as well. That is crazy. So if you just need to hunt for a specific couple pieces for Marishis and Golden Troop, you can do that. It's such a resin efficient domain that it almost doesn't matter that it's in here because it's worth farming anyways. Because if you're farming Marishis Say Hunter, you're almost definitely farming for Farina as well. And if you're farming for Farina, you're almost definitely farming Marishis Say Hunter as well. But still, this is absolutely massive. We'll have to do a brand new artifact guide. As soon as we learn what the Natlin artifacts will do, I'll have to do a brand new artifact guide um, to update my recommendations for all the artifacts because now that they're all in the strong box except for the new domain the burning and oh navias isn't in here either i that's too bad i would have loved to see navias in here that would have been a lot more useful than marishi center golden troop because basically you could spend a lot more time farming for navias than you need for the healing set like the healing set's actually pretty good i use it on my shivrus and oftentimes on my shen yun but you need more better stats for your Navia than you do for the healing. So eventually it's going to be not as worth it to farm in there. Uh, whereas Golden Troop Marsh Center, pretty much always good to keep farming because you're usually going to have multiple characters that want those sets. So this is still one of the most efficient domains to set, but that I'm sure the Natlin domain will be excellent as well. So you'll be able to farm that and then strong box some of your missing pieces from these. Big W, very, very happy for um, for this, this is really good. I would say this is exceeds expectations because I would have expected just the Sumeria ones, but they gave us some Fontaine ones as well. Good job, Genshin. Good job. Uh, Serenity pot load and increasing furnishing inventory limit. After continuous performance optimization, load limit will be increased to 1.6 times the previous limit. Actually, kind of good. I'll actually go back to the. I'm not gonna cap. I know I'm not. I'm not a teapot main. Um, I'm not a teapot enjoyer, but I used to be. Uh, at least just for making my home my cool place where I could interact with my characters but I got really bummed that I ran out of space to put anything cool and now that it's 1.6 as a time and a half bigger I'm actually going to go back to the certain teapot and update my teapot and that's pretty cool uh, actually I, I would I hope that this can keep increasing with every new version big big w for the teapot I'm sure teapot mains are over the moon with that. Uh, food usage and cooking systems optimization, usage prompt before use, covering multiple scenarios. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, I agree. It's really actually, I don't really care that much about accidentally using a special dish, but like I almost use a special dish pretty often because they come up first when I click on a dead character. And so I'm glad that there's a prompt for that, honestly. Lower rank food items will be prioritized. Actually good. <laughs> this is actually a good update. Even though, again, I don't care that much. I, I kind of like seeing my cool specialty foods that, 
all the characters send me in the mail it's kind of piling up and it's starting to look really cool so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad for this. Paimon protect all the special dishes, adorable. The food interface uh, makes them easier to use. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on that. Developers have optimized some commonly user interfaces, commonly used interfaces to facilitate a smooth and convenient operation experience. Okay, good. I mean, I'd like to see what it is, but good. Uh, condensed resin crafting interface. It will display the current number of condensed resin you have and will automatically select the maximum amount you can craft without exceeding the limit. That's good because it's actually pretty annoying to not know how many you have on this screen. Kind of ridiculous. I'm really glad that they changed this. Seems like they've been saving a lot for this particular stream. Very, very happy. Very good. Big fan. Uh, the preview of excess EXP will be displayed, simplifying weapon enhancement operations, fine with me. Foraging will automatically select the maximum quantity, very nice. During repeated foraging quantities to be produced, inherit those that have been foraged, interface will reset after exiting, all right. I don't do too much foraging these days, but cool. Uh, in the new version, the personal profile display page will add the number of characters at max friendship level. A uh, number of stars from the Spiral Abyss, increased character limit, very nice. If the, if Genshin had more social features to like co-op and stuff, like better co-op, I would care about this, but I currently don't care that much. Uh, we've also set up a function for your display constellation level, so you can flex your whaling, very nice. Long quest prompt function. Developers noticed that during the adventure, there are some quests with long durations and high difficulty. If you enter without warning, you may experience forced teleportation, interrupted processes, and restarts. Therefore, the developers have created the long quest prompt function so that you can plan your adventures accordingly. For, po for quests with long storyline durations, will trigger to remind you to help arrange your time responsibly. Long quest prompt will recommendations for required elements, weapon types. I mean, I don't really care about this. I can kind of guess which ones are going to be long, but hey, that's fine. No problem. I'm sure it's good for someone. Doesn't seem to hurt. Uh, in addition to those optimizations to reduce the long-term game burden on you and optimize resource output starting our output starting from res version 5.0 we plan to adjust the acceptance criteria for weekly reputation quests and make adjustments to the corresponding battle pass missions when the reputation level of certain regions reaches the maximum the weekly reputation quest for that region will no longer be available I actually don't know exactly what that means. It will remove the weekly reputation quest from battle pass weekly missions, complete rethrust and complete three bounties. Is that good? Do we want that removed? Isn't that why? Are they adding something else? The battle pass missions will be adjusted as follows. A new quest series for accumulated enhancement of five star artifacts will be added. Completing the quest series will grant a total of 3,600 battle pass XP. Enhance, th enhance five star artifacts a total of 30 levels. The non reputation experience rewards for Natlin's weekly reputation quests will also be adjusted from Mora to sanctifying unction. So, so you get artifact XP instead of Mora for doing the weekly quest. I mean, and you can't do the weekly the weekly bounties so you can't do the weekly bounties in regions you already have max reputation. What if all of them have max reputation? Then you can't do any more weekly bounties. Confused face. And then it's not going to be in the battle pass anymore. And they're replacing it with five star artifacts. A total of 100 levels. So that's five five star artifact enhancements. Hopefully that's for the whole battle pass and not a weekly one. This battle pass period. Okay, I mean, five five star artifacts uh, across the whole battle pass seems fine. And you get primo gems in the battle pass for doing this you get primo gem you get free primo gems in the battle pass for doing the artifact thing and artifact xp and reputation point no that's battle pass point i'm gonna have to see this myself to really i think i get it but like i think i need to see it in battle pass daily missions the battle pass exp for completing claim daily mission reward four times will be increased from 50, 150 to 200 as for the above adjustments, the developers will issue Mora times a million in one go. Huh? The developers will issue Mora times one million in one go? Please stay tuned for the official notice on the distribution details. What? So they're taking away getting Mora from the battle pass and instead they're just giving us one million Mora? What the, what the hell? This, this, this last bit like jump scared me. Like what is going, are people talking about that? Uh, that's crazy, bro. Huh, well, I think that's good overall. I'm gonna, I, I mean, based on how good everything else was, I'm going to assume that this is good. A million Mora, that's a lot of battle, like you get like, that's a lot of weeks of battle pass. I mean, okay, to be fair, if I don't have to do weekly bounties anymore um, and I'm still getting the rewards somewhere else, that would be ideal because they're kind of annoying. They're not very good or they could make them harder and have better rewards. Interesting. Um, yeah, this last one I'm going to have to experience. Uh, let me know if you get it more than I do, but really, really excited for world level nine 
artifact domain strong box honestly the other stuff is really cool too and yeah this is a big dub natlin dub good job genshin let me know your thoughts take care bye for now